Hello, everyone. Great to uh, be able to have this opportunity to talk with you uh, via video. Kathy asked me to answer two questions. Uh, one relating to how my research progressed since receiving my grant of $8,616 from WGC in 2013 and how beneficial uh, to my research uh, the grant has been. It is uh, with great pleasure uh, that I report that uh, shortly after receiving the grant, we got a CIHR grant uh, for three years for 300,000 um, and uh, six dollars um, in conjunction with the medical student. Uh, we've had uh, five publications We've closed uh, the grant just now, nine years later, in February this year, uh, with ethics. And uh, what a grand finale because the student I was working with, uh, Yan Shu, was a first year medical student here at Queens. Now he's a full on hematologist uh, in uh, the University of Ottawa. And what a grand finale. He sent me a photo of his eight month old uh, Mava reading a hematology magazine. And uh, we've had the opportunity to work with uh, individuals in Ottawa uh, as well as Toronto. And it's been really amazing that uh, we were able to, with the that seed funding, the 8,000, be able to really start from the pilot project and really uh, go forth and make it into um, a, a grand project linking with provincial data. Hope everyone's having a great day. John Muscadieri, I'm an intensivist and clinician scientist at uh, Kingston Health Sciences Center. Um, the grant uh, from the Women's Giving Circle on uh, what patients and uh, families uh, valued most in outcomes allowed us to expand our research in, into that area. Um, and I was able to translate that into further funding and allowed me to be successful at a larger grant um, which uh, led to the, a grant from the Networks of Centers of Excellence, which is a pan-Canadian uh, network funded on frail, on, uh, on older people living with frailty. And, uh, um, and that, that's still ongoing and this has been uh, uh, work for the past uh, number, uh, number of years and uh, we're just renewing our funding for that. Hi, my name is David Reed, and I am a clinician scientist here at the Gastrointestinal Diseases Research Unit at Queen's. I received a grant from the Women's Giving Circle in 2015, which was the same year that I started on faculty. And receiving that grant um, had a number of uh, positive out, uh, effects uh, for me and uh, our research program. The first of which was it allowed us to continue to move our project forward and eventually publish our findings um, on the project that we received the grant for. Secondly, we actually, as a result of publishing those findings, uh, were contacted by another research group um, in the United States and, and entered into a collaboration with them as they had similar interests uh, to us that, in terms of what we were researching related to that project. And then thirdly, um, that was a, uh, enabled us to continue uh, to move forward into the overall uh, goal of our research program of, of why patients with irritable bowel syndrome uh, develop symptoms related to food intake 
and um, we've been able to get more grants and, and enter into more collaborations to really try and better understand the mechanisms of how that occurs so we can hopefully develop uh, better therapies in the future. And so the grant from the Women's Giving Circle was really a critical uh, first stepping stone uh, for myself and, and our research group that I'm involved uh, with um, to really uh, move our research program forward. And so um, I very much would like to, to thank the Women's Giving Circle for that grant as it was a really uh, critical grant in the early uh, part of my career. And uh, most importantly, I would like to congratulate all of you on your 10th anniversary. In 2015, I was given an award from the Women's Giving Circle for a proposal that we entitled The Role of MicroRNA as Regulators of Redox Changes in Psychiatric Disorders. The money was used to fund our research at the time to see whether we could find any evidence that pathways that regulate the body's treatment of reactive oxygen and nitrogen species might be dysregulated in patients with bipolar disorder. To do the work, we were examining small regulatory molecules called microRNAs and looking at whether these dynamic molecules were present at different levels in people with uh, psychiatric disorders relative to controls. We collaborated with a researcher at the University of Toronto, Dr. Anna Andreaza, who continues to work in this area today. The work in my lab was here at Queen's was carried out by a very enterprising young woman, Dr. Helena Kim. Dr. Kim was an MD at the time with a great interest in academia, and she has subsequently gone on to a highly successful career as a psychiatrist at the University of Toronto, where she remains very productive in academia. The work that was funded by the Giving Circle at Queen's allowed us to do what we had proposed, using three data sets from patients with bipolar disorder and comparing our results to controls. After analyzing the data sets, we saw that indeed the microRNAs that control the redox changes were regulated differently in the patients compared to the controls. We were able to publish our work in a paper in the Journal of Psychiatric Research in 2018, and the publication was called Examining Redox Modulation Pathways in the Postmortem Frontal Cortex in Patients with Bipolar Disorder Through Data Mining of MicroRNA Expression Datasets. Dr. Kim was the first author, and Dr. Anna Andreazza was the last author, and we included several other researchers from Queens and from U of T on that paper. While my lab no longer studies the genetics of psychiatric disorders, this grant was a wonderful stepping stone, both for Dr. Kim to move forward in her career and for me as I developed my approach at Queen's to studying the genetics of other human diseases now including cancer. So thank you very much for the award. So, um, hello, and um, uh, my name is Rumen Milev, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Women's Giving Circle for a donation uh, towards our research program, uh, which was quite useful to establish uh, the levels of um, 
uh, stress hormones in uh, people with depression who were um, uh, pre uh, uh, imposed on a stressful uh, test. Um, it turns out that uh, people who have had mal uh, childhood maltreatment are more likely to um, have um, elevated response um, under stress and uh, this has been something we've been studying for a long time and uh, your contribution has helped um, answer um, one part of the question of um, how um, childhood maltreatment has uh, uh, affect our um, propensity or liability to develop uh, depressive symptoms in the future. The whole idea here is to um, be able to uh, create biomarkers uh, which will inform us uh, uh, which patient will respond to what treatment, which is something we currently do not have in psychiatry. And that's the goal of uh, all our studies in the last uh, 11 years. And um, we have made some progress, but there's a lot more to be discovered. And we hope for that in the next 10 to 15 years, we will have some specific results to report. Thank you very much once again.